for education authorities partners <coughs> in educ and partners in education uh, school leaders teachers and teacher educators to explore and deliberate on the various strategies that uh, can improve the production retention and motivation of competent teachers at the means the changing courses of the profession in africa so that is the background of the of the <coughs> of the webinar and uh, we are as a start, we have a packed agenda with many speakers, but we believe we have enough time for, to, for us to cover all the items and also have, have a very fruitful discussion. And we shall kick off the um, webinar with a welcoming um, comments from our director, Dr. Odon Quintin. Are you online, please? Yes, I'm online. Uh, let me put my... Um, video on. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Hungi, and uh, thank you all for being here uh, today. Um, I mean, this is actually a topic uh, that is so fundamental uh, for um, what we do at uh, UNESCO IGBA, the International Institute for Capacity Building in Africa. And I can see some colleagues, and I can see Carlos, you have your uh, video on. And I know this topic is also fundamental to, to what you do. Um, so why does it matter? I think it's obvious, right? I mean, if teachers are not motivated, um, the children are not going to learn as well. Uh, Well-motivated teachers can make a wonderful difference uh, in the life of a child. Um, uh, Hungi uh, didn't mention uh, some of the work he has done uh, on uh, this topic uh, using uh, surveys of teachers and lecturers um, in Kenya in particular. And what we find um, and I think you will not be surprised, is that um, job satisfaction among teachers is often low. Uh, the perception uh, that teachers have of the social status of the profession is also often low. Um, and uh, there are many reasons for that. Um, and I think many of you know those reasons. I mean, in many countries, uh, teacher pay uh, is not great. Um, the um, way uh, that uh, teachers may become school leaders um, is often uh, without uh, management skills training uh, for the school leaders to make sure that they get the best of the teachers in, in the classroom. Um, but what I find very interesting, um, uh, including in the work that Hungi has done on Kenya, is that there are ways uh, to improve teacher satisfaction. Uh, the relationships, of course, uh, in the schools matter. Uh, it's actually amazing how in many, many settings we find um, that uh, teachers appreciate a lot um, the relationships that they have among colleagues uh, in the schools. That boosts uh, satisfaction. Um, we, we recently asked, and this is just an anecdote, but, but I think it's revealing. We recently asked um, uh, to teachers in the Gambia and Sierra Leone in the context of the uh, COVID pandemic and uh, efforts to try to improve access to digital information. What would be most useful to you? Well, they told us um, a free connection to the internet. Um, that might not be that expensive to provide. It's not as expensive to provide than raising teacher wages. Um, even uh, something we discussed at the last uh, webinar, which was on mental health and psychosocial support for teachers, we find that when schools have mechanisms to provide mental health and psychosocial support for teachers, that improves um, the job satisfaction of teachers, and that will improve effort, uh, that will reduce absenteeism. Uh, it will just lead to um, children remaining in schools and learning better in school. Um, I don't want to spend too much time. I just want to say one last thing uh, before uh, giving back uh, the floor to Hungi. Uh, I often go to conferences, and um, when I can, I try to mention things that ministries of education can do at very low cost for very high impact. One of those three um, is to actually conduct annual surveys of teacher well-being and job satisfaction with some core part and something that can change from year to year. Most ministries do not do that. Uh, and these can really inform uh, their policies. Uh, it can take the pulse um, of um, the profession. It can really make a difference. So I'm very happy uh, that we have this seminar today. Um, I hope you will enjoy it. And Hungi, back to you. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Quitin. 
he doesn't like being called Dr. Wondon. He likes <laughs> being called Quitting, which is okay. Uh, uh, our keynote speaker is uh, none other than uh, Dr. Carlos, who is the chief of section teacher development at the UNESCO headquarters. And uh, his uh, topic, or rather his, <clears throat> his keynote speech will be you know, on how do we attract and retain best motivated teachers in Africa to ensure high performing education systems. Over to you, Carlos. Thank you, thank you very much, Hongi, and, and thank you very much, uh, Quentin, for those for those opening remarks and and for organizing this brilliant series of uh, of webinars as part of the of the Kicks Hub. So very very happy to to join and very grateful for the for the invitation to speak certainly about one of the topics uh, that is most important, I believe, today uh, in in the world of teachers, which is uh, how do we attract and how do we retain teachers uh, as we know there's a there's a global shortage of teachers and and what i would like to share with you is possibly uh the findings of uh, some of the research that we're doing for, uh sorry i can hear um some some noise some background noise uh so what i want i will present to you is the results of some um, of some research that we're doing for a global report that we are publishing UNESCO and the teacher task force uh, on global shortages. Um, this basically delves into the issue of how do we make the profession more attractive and how can we elevate the status of uh, the teaching profession? So let me just share my screen. You should see it there. Let me just go make it full screen. Okay. So uh, basically to present uh, some of the problematic that we see on the continent today. As we know, uh, we are far from reaching the Sustainable Development Goal 4, and teachers are fundamental in achieving primary and secondary education that is universal. Uh, from the beginning of the SDG 4s in 2015, we knew that there was a number of teachers that was lacking, and we will be presenting new data to you uh, on the 8th of November as we pre-launch uh, the report on the General Conference of UNESCO. But, uh, but the data in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa has not changed. So that is very, very symptomatic of, uh, of the teacher crisis. We still need uh, a huge number of qualified and motivated teachers uh, that are deployed equitably to achieve uh, the national and the global education goals. In Sub-Saharan Africa alone, as you can see in this graph, there's a need for 16.5 million additional teachers if we are to achieve SDG4. This is, of course, the result of uh, growing fertility rates, a growing demand for education. We know some 10 years ago and after education for all, um, Secondary education became mandatory in a number of countries in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. So that, of course, increased the demand, as you can see in the graph, for secondary education teachers. We estimate that at least 11 million teachers are needed at secondary level and 5.4 million at primary level. Um, and the issue of shortages is not, is not minor. Uh, it has to do not only with not having enough teachers, uh, it also has to do with teaching not being an attractive profession for many young people uh, to enter the labor market. Uh, the graph will also show you what's the need in terms of new teaching posts, but there's also the need for replacement of teachers that leave the profession. Throughout the world, we see that teachers leave the profession within the first three to five years. It's usually novice teachers uh, that actually leave, but not only. And I think if we want to retain and professionalize uh, a good uh, workforce, we need to wonder as to the reasons why they leave, and we need to provide policy solutions for that. Uh, now, what are what are what are some of the from the research from the different initiatives and policies that we have uh, researched? What are what can we do about the shortages? Uh, so I wanted to summarize in six points uh, what are some of the traits, some of the features that we have seen 
in uh, different teacher policies, in different programs, and that have actually made a difference. A, to making the profession more attractive, and B, to addressing the teacher shortages. Uh, one of them has to do with the obvious, to understand the nature of the problem of teacher shortages, basically how many teachers do we need? That's a, that's a first step. Also to understand why teachers are leaving the profession and to do that through the use of national data and tools. As you know, education management and information systems are paramount in, in this undertaking. Um, TEMIS, modules on teachers, knowing who they are, where they are, uh, how qualified they are, what are the needs that they present, uh, can help uh, basically understand the support that is needed, the gaps that are needed. We see, and it's a commonality in a number of countries, rural areas usually are understaffed. Uh, so then we see, for example, important um, initiatives that have to do with providing housing uh, for rural teachers and security or transport, uh, et cetera. But beyond the, the rural and isolated areas, this is also discipline-based. We do see in certain regions a huge need for mathematics teachers, for example. So there might be tons of teachers for language or social sciences, but when it goes when it comes to STEM, for example, we see much less of a, of a number of teachers. So, so the shortages can also be not only regional; they can be thematic, uh, and they can be generic as well. As we know, there's a shortage of male teachers, for example in early childhood care and education. And this is, of course, uh, derived from, from a gender bias as to whose responsibility is the upbringing and the education of, of young children. So the fact that we have, the, that, that the profession in many, in many places, like uh, is the case in Sub-Saharan Africa, is, is mostly feminine, is based on a prejudice, but it has consequences in terms of uh, school leaving, for example, the school disengagement from learners that do not see uh, their teachers as role models or their teachers as representing the diversity and the cultural specificity of their localities. This has to do with linguistics, for example. We have teachers who are not able to teach in the language of learners. The Global Education Monitoring Report recently showed that one in four learners was taught by a teacher that did not understand their language. So that is that is pretty great. So the shortage uh, uh, also has to do with the social diversity, with ethnicity, uh, with sexual preference, and many other factors. So so I think understanding the nature of teacher shortages, where are the, where they are needed, uh, why they leave the profession, uh, things that uh, that that Quentin also mentioned, and the work that Igba is doing on teacher motivation is very important uh, as well to see the well-being of teachers, which has to do, of course, with working conditions, and I'll get to that point, but that also has to do uh, with uh, a sense of realization and sense, and sense of fulfillment and respect. Now, the second, the second policy solution would be to professionalize the teaching force and improve career structures. We have spoken about gender balance, it is important, as we were saying, it is mostly in early childhood care and education that we have the vast majority uh, of, uh, of women in some countries, about 100 percent, 98, 99 percent. But globally, it is around 90. Uh, while in, in, in vocational education, in higher education levels, this is inverse. It is mostly men, particularly in leadership positions, for example, it's only men and not women that are in those posts. So I think it is important to, to point out that uh, gender equality measures uh, are needed for teachers to advance in the profession. Now, advancing the profession is usually due to seniority, but increasingly there are more meritocratic ways of moving up the ladder. Uh, and it has to do with the professionalization of the teaching profession. Uh, sometimes, also, the, 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 the placement of teachers temporarily in hardship situations uh, is, a, is an, an, an emphasis or an, or an incentive to, for, for example, earn 
career points so that they can move up the ladder, but also it makes a lot to their experience of, of teaching, for example, in multi-grade, multi-level, multilingual classrooms that actually makes them uh, much more experienced and prepared uh, to address uh, difficulties uh, within teaching. And, and as we said, it is very important to have a career that teachers have something to look forward to, to know that their role uh, can be diversified and is not necessarily to be solely in the classroom, but as you know, teachers can move from novice to more experienced, to expert teachers, to mentors, and their roles can change accordingly in combination with classroom practice, which is something that, that, that adds dynamism, that adds attractivity. Uh, to the profession. So teachers can become mentors, they can become supervisors, they can become um, teachers, uh, school leaders, and ultimate, as, as we see in many ministries, uh, uh, ministry officials. Uh, the third, the third uh, response to the shortages and to make the profession more attractive has to do with supporting collaboration and building a community. When we speak about teaching as a profession, uh, this means a community that it is brought together by a common uh, knowledge of body, by a common know-how of, uh, of how to teach, and uh, by a common goal, which is that uh, of the education of their peers and making the best uh, of, uh, of the learning uh, opportunities that, that learners have. And this can only be done in terms of collaboration. It is much better uh, when we talk about, for example, from policy making, how teachers collaborate in terms of, for example, curriculum reform, how they talk about um, assessment, um, classroom management, etc. cetera. Um, we can see that teachers can collaborate with others, not only within teachers, but also among teachers. Uh, for example, the transformation of professional development programs, so that they are collaborative. The pedagogies that emphasize, for example, also service learning or action research, or these kind of methodologies that are uh, relational and that, and that help uh, build uh, communities of teachers, communities of practice, uh, communities of reflection, communities of exchange, uh, where knowledge is produced. And this is very, very, a very, very important point. Teachers need to produce, I mean, teachers produce knowledge, but they need to be recognized as researchers, as, as public intellectuals, as knowledge producers. Uh, that's also something that we can do, uh, driving policy that we can do, leading schools. The fourth point has to do with improving working conditions and teacher pay. That is very important. Uh, as you know, uh, and, and, and my colleague Dennis, uh, you should, Dennis Signolo from, from Education International usually mentions that, which the working conditions of teachers are the learning conditions of students. And I think that is something uh, that is very, very important to remark. The working conditions of teachers have to do with the payment, with the contracts, with the workloads, with the difficulties and hardships that teachers face in their work, which are material, but there are symbolic conditions that are very important as well, which means how much teachers are trusted, how much autonomy they are given to actually make changes and make decisions in education from the classroom to the school to the policy level. So the working conditions are certainly something that we see that needs to be improved, as you might have, <clears throat> excuse me, as you might have heard. Uh, the meeting of the high-level panel on the teaching profession that took place in New York uh, last last week uh, came up with a series of recommendations that we will be able to to share with you on World Teachers Day. So stay tuned for the fifth of October. Uh, that aim at improving the conditions and the status of teachers. So it's not only about the material, but also about the symbolic. The fifth point has to do with enhancing the status of teachers and strengthening their voices. Uh, one, one key strategy for this is, of course, having social dialogue and policy dialogue, one in which teachers can be heard, uh, one in which teachers and, and their organizations, their unions 
enter into conversation with other stakeholders in education, most certainly with the government, with the Ministry of Education. That's something that happens in many countries. And we are very happy to support, uh, as we have in Africa, um, the, the frameworks for, for social dialogue. We work together with Education International, with the International Labor Organization, to promote social dialogue at country level. Um, and, and this is something that helps basically hear and give voice uh, to, to teachers and, and, and their claims and their, and their knowledge, as we said, as well. Uh, so this this comes hand in hand with the social status. I will not reiterate what I what I already mentioned. This has to do with conferring that status to teachers as public intellectuals, as knowledge producers, as policy partners that is needed. And that, of course, has to do with you know raising the working conditions, raising the status of teachers to that level. And finally, ensuring that holistic policies address the attrition and retention of teachers. Now, what does that mean? Uh, it means that policies and that the, the performance and the quality of teaching is conditioned by a series of, uh, of factors. It is not only the pay. It has to do uh, with the professionalization. It has to do with the careers. It has to do with equity. So at UNESCO, as you know, we, we've been working with the Teacher Policy Development Guide to support countries in, in policy making, in formulating policies that integrate these interrelated factors anyway. Sometimes we want to transform teaching and we focus on teacher education and professional development. And by the way, thank you for the little drawings in the in the PowerPoint. Um, but we often forget that there are different uh, measures that are related to it. Of course, the issue of, of working conditions, the issue of social dialogue, and many others. So holistic policies can help address the issue of attraction and retention of teachers. Uh, and finally, I just wanted to, to, to let you know that we are celebrating World Teachers Day uh, uh, globally in October uh, on October 5th. I know our colleagues from IGBA will also have a number of celebrations before and after uh, World Teachers Day, and that we will be focusing World Teachers Day on the issue of the global imperative to reverse the teacher shortages. So it is called the teachers we need for the education that we want. And, uh, and the concept note and the program you can find in the website that you find here on the screen. Please join us online or in Paris in the, on the 5th of October uh, for this celebration, for these discussions. We will have basically the discussions of the high-level panel uh, on the teaching profession. The recommendations will be discussed by a number of experts. Uh, in the panel, we will be celebrating uh, teachers as well uh, by means of recognition and acknowledgement. Uh, we will inquire as to the role of uh, of um, teacher prices, for example, to address the issue of shortages, to elevate the status of teaching, uh, and so on. So I'll stop right there, just to thank you very, very much for your attention. I'll be very happy to answer any questions there might be. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Carlos. Uh, thank you so much for outlining the various points on how to attract and, of course, retain the the teachers and of course the best teachers people who are interested in teaching you know not, not just people who go on to come in for a short time and leave that, that's why i think you outlined all those points which were very clear to us thank you so much and i think uh, for the questions we'll leave it um, at a later stage uh, toward the discussion section so at this point i'd like to to invite uh, our colleague from um, Education International, Dr. Dennis Signoro, who is the Director of Education International Africa Regional Office in Accra, Ghana, who will be setting the pace. It is all about finance initiatives to motivate teachers. Okay, so are you there, Dr. Dennis? And of course, as you wait for Dennis to join us, please feel free to 
uh, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the chat section where we'll be picking them. Um, my, my colleagues will be picking them and uh, we shall be answering them uh, toward the end of the, uh, of the, or even even in between, you can still be answering. If we don't have um, Dr. Dennis online, I would suggest we go to the next section and then we can give him a chance when he come. Uh, Dennis, are you there? Maybe he's having connection problem. So I suggest we go to the panel discussion section and we have a panel of, um, of is it five, five, five uh, experts who will be talking to us about uh, issues to do with teacher motivation. Uh, we shall be having a first presentation by Mamadou, uh, Mamadou Baka, them, uh, who is a community officer from uh, Ghana, uh, from Gambia, from the Gambia Teacher Union. Are you online? Mamadou? Mamadou might be having challenges. Victoria, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Okay. Okay, so uh, I was worried that nobody was hearing me. So it's good that you're hearing me. So uh, if we don't have uh, Mamadou for now, we can have him come later. So we have uh, the other uh, panelist is a given from um, Afghan, and she'll be talking about nurturing intrinsic and intrinsic and extrinsic motivation of ECD teachers and the minister changing context of a teaching profession. She's an ECD expert. Uh, given, are you there? Yeah, I can see you are there. Yes, I Over am, you, and I'm ready for the presentation. Let me just share screen. So can you hear me? We can Hello? indeed. Okay. Yes, we can thank hear you. you. Thank you. Um, first of all, let me um, really thank, uh, thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation. Um, I will be talking about nurturing intrinsic and extrinsic motivation for ECE teachers. So the focus of my presentation is um, on the ECT, ECE teachers. Um, so I have a, um, a slide, which is just really, I won't spend too much time there. It's just to um, sort of um, update on the context where we have seen many countries committing to ensuring that human capital is fully developed and also the increasing investment in basic education, including um, early childhood uh, development with a common uh, policy position across the region of the inclusion of one year of pre-primary education in the formal school system. So, um, but even with this increase in access, um, the delivery of education services, uh, particularly in ECE, is also marked by quality and equity challenges with the teacher factors um, observed to be of profound um, uh, consideration um, in the delivery of quality um, education. So um, I just want to sort of interrogate the issue of the ECE quality and the role of teachers. Um, African countries have committed to two key agendas, the CISA, the 2016-2025 Continental Education Strategy and the Sustainable Development Goal. And with these two key agendas, the quality dimension is core, both to CISA and the 2030 agenda. So, um, of course, when we talk about quality, um, we really look at it from the perspective of how the learning environment is supporting children's development and children's early learning. And we do know that as we look at quality, there are interlinked factors or components that uh, work in terms of uh, the delivery of quality. We're talking about teachers, family, quality assurance systems, curriculum, et cetera. But the availability of pre-primary teachers, their well-being and their professional development is a key determinant of quality in early learning provision. 
And we do know, and I think this has already been mentioned, that classrooms with positive teaching approaches and interactions normally lead to greater gains for children. So quality early childhood development um, teachers create the appropriate environment and improve overall quality. And particularly with respect to the early learning, the pedagogical um, uh, approaches that uh, contribute uh, most effectively to um, to add to the to the child's uh, development outcome, early learning and development uh, outcomes really are dependent on how stimulating, um, how the teacher is creating a stimulating and supportive early learning environment. So what we're seeing generally is a growing interest in teacher motivation, particularly with the learning crisis um, in the region. So. Um, the, the quality ECD workforce, um, as I said, constitutes a core element in effective pre-primary education. Um, and we do know that at the facility level, the existence of well-trained and experienced and well-motivated teachers make a difference um, in the child learning and development outcomes. And I think the previous speakers have alluded uh, to this. So as we look at the uh, um, ECE, the teacher motivation within the ECE framework, um, I would like to interrogate a little bit the whole area of um, teacher motivation. And we do know that the teacher, the issue of motivation really points to the underlying reason why a person decides to go into teaching, how long they sustain it, their commitment, their goals, and also the level of effort that they are willing to put. So it's really about the energy that a teacher, a prospecting teacher or a practicing teacher brings into the learning environment. And as I mentioned, this is linked to, to um, the whole area of student uh, motivation. So, um, and as has already been mentioned, the range of motivations compete. There are a number of motivations as to why a, somebody should choose teaching and why should they should remain in the teaching uh, profession. And these are dependent on the social cultural context. So it is a rather complex dynamics at, at, at play um, in terms of uh, motivation. But what we should also realize is that motivation and these factors within the teacher, which are which is intrinsic, um, or from external factors uh, which are extrinsic. So um, this slide really is just to um, just bring out some of the uh, factors that have been found to influence extrinsic motivation of teachers. I won't spend too much time because some of them have already been mentioned. The issues around a competitive salary and benefit package, a supportive and respectful work environment, the issue of recognition and appreciation in the social cultural context, the issue of the career advancement and the, the, the career ladder, uh, issues around management and leadership, um, having a clear set of standards, the stronger accountability systems all work towards um, building uh, a distinct motivation of teachers and the teachers feeling that they uh, are able to deliver. So uh, the status of teaching profession, I think we have already uh, made uh, reference to that. And sometimes it's also about things like the job security. Um, the holidays teachers enjoy, the, the, the calendar of uh, the teaching profession. So some of these could be um, intrinsic motivators, motives for someone entering um, in the profession. So, um, but we also know that the reality, those are the motives. Now, what is the reality on the ground? We know that there's, a, there's the issue of supply of qualified teachers, we also know that um, the terms of conditions of service um, uh, are left wanting in, uh, in, in terms of the ECE um, uh, workforce. There is a massive shortage of, um, of teachers um, across the board, but also uh, particularly in the area um, uh, subsector. So I'm not going to go into the details of this slide, but it really is just to emphasize that we do have a, a dilemma in terms of the shortage of teachers and that the teachers who are there work under the extreme um, um, conditions in terms of their workload because of the shortage of, of teachers. So, um, Kevin, uh, I just wanted uh, to... 
Are you able to summarize in the next two minutes? Because uh, yes, we are I will questions. summarize. Okay, yes. thank you. So, um, so I just want to maybe highlight a few areas uh, when we talk about intrinsic motivation as we consider whether our environments are supportive of intrinsic of extrinsic motivation. The structure of the preschool sector the status and recognition, the loan remuneration, inadequate professionalization, the challenging work environment to change, and also the gender dimension, which have dimension. So we have a conclusion that from an extrinsic motivation point of view, how the current um, education sector does not support um, the development of extrinsic motivation. And very quickly, just the bottom, the intrinsic motives refers to feelings of inner self-fulfillment. So some from within um, the, 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 um, the, the, the teacher. So um, there's some intrinsic motives such as passion for teaching and learning, a sense of purpose, you know, these inner driven um, factors. And this is important because intrinsic motivation, these, mo these uh, motivational styles also influence the teaching styles. So, um, if I can maybe just allow to speak to this slide, which simply is, is referring to an analysis of how our context is supporting intrinsic motivation. We know that there's limited opportunity to support potential teachers who are interested in the career for its own sake. We know that there's a high unemployment uh, rate, especially amongst the youths, and some of them are turning to preschool teaching as an easier option. We do know that the selection criteria for entrance into the profession sometimes does not uh, include screening of potential candidates. And then, of course, the lack of recognition and incentives for self-driven uh, teachers excelling in performance. So if I may just be allowed to just um, skip some slides and go to some of the policy considerations. And I promise this will be a slide, last slide. Uh, so I think as we look at enhancing extrinsic and intrinsic uh, teacher motivation, strengthening the professionalization of the early learning workforce, Integration of ECE in the primary sector must have led into harmonization of the workforce system because we are seeing the disparity between teachers in the early learning sector and teachers in the primary sector. They have, we have to institute a system for recognition and accreditation of pre service programs, exploring innovative approaches to increase workforce numbers. So there may be a deliberate way to attract uh, potential teachers into this sector. Include is it teachers in the area of teacher teacher what um, inclusion of workforce planning in the national ECE strategies and undertaking EC audits, generating data for planning the expansion of the quality ECs. So I would like to share um, I can share time um, um, because of time, but I think um, let me end there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Given, for giving us um, an insight into the intrinsic and extrinsic uh, factors um, uh, in the ECD Center um, workforce. That's very useful for this particular workshop and um, webinar. And uh, the information you have given us is very valuable. So now I would like to us to go to the next uh, panelist. And uh, I don't know whether they are now back. Uh, Mamadou. Baka, are you there? And as you wait for Mabadu, I could also mention that uh, we have uh, uh, our colleagues who are supporting us with the chat and they are taking notes and uh, you can put your comments there, your questions there. We have uh, Mary Ann Dress, who is my colleague at, with the, who is the lead consultant at Kicks Africa 19 Hub Secretariat, and uh, Yvonne, who is taking notes, Yvonne Boya. Uh, who is a research consultant with the Kicks 19 African Hub, is also helping us there. So just know that uh, you have the chat where you can put uh, questions and uh, we shall take them up at the appropriate time. Uh, yeah, I see that, uh, Mamadou, are you there? If you're there, you can put up your hand. No, I don't think we have Mamadou. So we'll skip uh, for now and go to the next presenter. Uh, this is Andrew Banda. Are you there, Andrew Banda? You can put up your hand if you're there so that you know that you're there. I don't know. If not, we can go to the next one. Jane Chikapa. 
Are you there? Jane? Ah, Jane is there. Perfect. <laughs> Jane uh, is, uh, maybe you can briefly introduce yourself. It says you're a teacher in Malawi. So maybe you could just, uh, in a one or two sentences, say who you are, and then you give us um, your presentation, which is a teacher, teacher's perspective on how school leadership, support, and management for, for <coughs> fosters motivation. So, uh, and you'll have, after that, you'll have five minutes. Thank you, Jane. Over to you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Jen Chikaba and I am a teacher from Malawi. I'm teaching at a secondary school in Malawi. Let me share my screen. Just a minute. Yeah, I, Heno, Heno, can you able to help us screen from our end? So, can you see my screen? It's coming, it's coming. Oh, it's yeah. coming, yes, yes. Now it's okay. Make it presentation okay. mode. Jen, make it presentation yeah. mode. Mm. At the bottom somewhere, you'll see the presentation yeah, yeah, mode. Just yes, minute. almost yeah. there. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm. Ah, perfect. When, yeah. When I was young, my father was very supportive of me. He used to support me so much in terms of motivation. I remember when I usually did well at school, he would give me some presents. He would give me some verbal motivation to say, congrats, good, keep it up. And then, yes, my mom was also supportive. I know she would cook food for us and everything. But then uh, most of the times I would remember my dad most because of the contribution he made in terms of, he made in terms of motivating me verbally and non-verbally. The sweets um, he would give me after doing well, the exercise books. And then I drew closer to my dad and even respected him even more because of this. Mm, the, there is a big role which um, the leaders have in terms of leadership has in, in order to make a teacher motivated. Mm, the effective leaders or effective leadership would mean whereby performance is, is increased in teachers in a case whereby a teacher who is motivated by the leadership would have a clear vision. They would have a clear vision being instilled by the leaders themselves to what is supposed to be done, what are they supposed to achieve at the end of the day. When there is a clear motivation from the leadership, management and support, there is passion for, for teaching. When a teacher is being motivated by the leadership, they have that passion of waking up each and every day to go and teach and even go beyond teaching in the classroom. When there is the support from leaders, leadership, there is a teacher inspiration, there is innovation. The teacher goes beyond what is being taught in the class and becomes innovative. They come up with new criteria, they come up with new strategies just because they are being motivated by their leadership or they are being motivated by their, their, their management. The other thing which, he, which is good about sub, having support or from the leadership and management is that mm, there will be high performance of the teacher the teacher would ensure that they achieve the objectives and the vision of the school as well as the vision of the, of the ministry as a whole. The other thing which can bring leadership, which can bring motivation to teachers is the recognition and appreci appreciation by the leaders. When the leaders are recognizing what the teachers are doing, the teacher will get motivated to say, oh, at least someone is recognizing what I'm doing. The recognition is not only maybe by giving them some awards, it could be recognizing them by calling them to their office and recognizing the work that they're doing and applauding them of that. The other thing which, uh, which is good about having leadership, which is supportive uh, to teachers is in terms of creating a good con conducive working environment and well-being. When a teacher is the being motivated 
they have a good working and conducive environment. They wake up each and every day looking forward to go and, going and teach. They look forward to meeting their students in a case where they are being motivated by their leaders. And the, the leaders are, have a role of ensuring that each and every time they have teachers, the teachers should have a good and conducive working environment. Mentorship. The leaders have a good big role to mentor the teachers. They are, there might be some teachers who are doing well. Yes, these teachers are supposed to be mentors to other teachers who might be lagging behind or who might have just joined the profession newly. So there is a need of leadership management to ensure that there is mentorship to the teachers so that they become extra, they become um, a teacher beyond their imagination. Inclusiveness, a teacher who, who has a leadership which is in, inclusive would be very motivated in their day-to-day -day work. A teacher who is be, feeling that they're being included regardless of their maybe gender, regardless of their, um, their ability or maybe they're able differently, they would feel that they are being included in all the activities in the classroom level as well as at school level. Hence, making mm -hmm. them motivated and feeling um, the need of teaching the classroom, teaching the students beyond the teaching hours and even teaching beyond what is in the curriculum and what is expected of them. Jim, the Jim, other thing which leaders are supposed to do is to, pro, to give access. The other thing Jim, which are leaders are supposed to do is to give access to teaching resources and technology. We cannot motivate, we cannot expect teachers to be motivated when they don't have access to resources for teaching, when they don't have um, technology. Nowadays, there are new methods of teaching in which we would require to use a lot of technology. For example, methods like Kahoot, Flipkart, you know, all this would require management or leadership support so that the teacher is the richest to the learners in the modern world and even achieves the goals of the day which are in the syllabus. Now, apart from expecting that leaders or management should motivate a teacher, a teacher has also a role on their own to stay motivated. You might encounter a scenario whereby maybe your leader is not, is not, does not motivate you. What do you do as a teacher? One does not just stay put and have fold their hands. They have to stay motivated. How do they do this? By having passion for education, by investing in knowledge, learning quite a lot from the internet, knowing what the curriculum is offering, new strategies that are there which they can use. The teacher could be innovative. They could be digital wise. They could have digital literacy. The teacher could be open to change, to say there are new policies coming in, issues to do with nowadays, maybe students being allowed to go to school in dreads, maybe in pairs of trousers. The teachers overcoming ad uh, adversity, the teachers seeing students as a means, seeing himself as a way, a means of making the students succeed. So the teacher should not only wait for the leaders, management, or the Minister of Education to, to, to motivate them, but they also have a role themselves to get motivated because it's not always the case that they will meet um, leadership or they will meet the ministry, which is so supportive. Uh, I would like to recommend that um, the leadership has got a big role in ensuring that teachers stay motivated and achieve their goals at the end of the day. The leadership should aim at motivating teachers or should aim at having motivated teachers each and every day. The leadership should ensure that teachers are given awards. Awards at the school level, um, the school doesn't have to go big and beyond their means. Awards could be at the national level. The awards could also be at a global level. So. Leadership has to ensure that it awards the teachers who are doing very well because when their teachers are awarded, they feel that they are getting recognized and they feel the edge to do even beyond the classroom. The other thing I would like to recommend is that uh, leadership should learn from other successful leaders. There are leaders out there in the communities. There are there's management, there are schools out there who are doing well, who have done well, who have motivated their teachers. So the leadership should be very open. The leadership should be, be willing to learn from other lead, leaders or from other schools which are doing very well. Capacity building on su successful leader motivation is also another thing I would recommend for leadership. If the, the 
the leaders want to motivate us. If the school has principal the management, the ministry wants to motivate us, then it has to ensure that the capacity which they are giving to the leaders are the ones which are, are heading towards successful leader motivation. Then lastly, I would also like to recommend a scenario whereby there is integrated performance development. For example, appraisals. Uh, a teacher being appraised after the maybe end of the term or after the end of the year. This usually, this usually gives teachers some targets, it usually gives them the drive to say, at the end of this term, I'm supposed to do this and that, this and that. And if I do this, I'm going to be maybe promoted or maybe if I don't do well, these are going to be the repercussions if I don't do well. So there is a need of having integrated performance development by the leaders to say, at the end of the day, they have to appraise their leaders based on performance. The last one is just a food for thought. As a teacher, my a question that I would like to raise to the rest of us here is, is teacher motivation really a game changer? Can leadership really have an impact on teacher motivation? Do we see a possible future in which teachers are motivated despite all the barriers that they are facing or despite all the barriers that are there towards teacher motivation? I believe teacher motivation is possible and leaders have got a role in ensuring that their teachers stay motivated because a motivated teacher is an innovative teacher. A motivated, motivated teacher is a teacher who produces results. A motivated teacher is a teacher who will produce citizens who are going to contribute economically, socially, as well as politically to the community. Thank you very much. A motivated teacher is a teacher who is going to produce citizens who are, go who are going, hey, that's a powerful uh, quote from you, Jane. Uh, Jane, maybe you forgot to tell us that uh, you are a global teacher prize finalist. So I take this opportunity to, to let the uh, participants know that. And thank you so much for the insight on uh, on uh, how the leadership in school can motivate teachers to perform even better. So thank you so much, Jane. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite the next uh, panelist, and this is Andrew, but I, I understand, Andrew, you are there. Andrew Banda from um, Zambia. Yes, moderator, I'm here. Can you hear me? Ah. Yeah, perfect, Andrew. So uh, uh, you are going. To, your topic, I think, is the same. It's a teacher perspective on how school leadership and uh, school support and management can foster motivation among teachers. And uh, you'll have uh, five minutes to to give us that presentation. Over to you, Andrew. And also introduce yourself briefly as you start. Okay. Um. Th thank you. I will just make a request that my presentation be be shared. Um, my name is Andrew Banda. Thank you, Sister Jane, for the good presentation. My name is Andrew Banda, based in Lusaka, Zambia. I'm a teacher with mm -hmm. over 10 years of teaching, and I'm an advocate of comprehensive sexuality education. I'm a mentor to young people. I'm a life coach, and above all, I am a teacher. So thank you, moderator, waiting for the presentation to be shared. Uh, okay, Henok, are you able to, to screen from your end? Henok, please. Andrew's presentation. Okay, you can be talking if you have some notes as um, our colleague and um, Henok. Share the screen. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, as we have heard from my colleague, at, okay, yeah, continue. Is, is sharing. So, as as we have heard from my colleague, we all of us, ladies and gentlemen, can agree that teacher motivation is very important. Why? Because teachers play a very important role in ensuring that we have learners who are 
well-rounded and we are producing them to be global citizens. So it's very important. Now, I would like to speak to what it is in the practical sense of teacher motivation. The first thing that we're asking for as teachers uh, with, with my colleague Jane is that we need to invest in the teacher. That is number one, we need to invest in the teacher. Why? Because investment in a teacher is investment for the entire world. So motivation is essential because it has a direct link to the quality of education that we will see in the schools. Can you move to the next slide, please? Next slide, I think my colleague touched on this one. Yes, so motivation in a teacher, one leads to productivity and improves performance, both for the teacher and the learners. Number two, uh, motivation in a teacher will breed creativity and innovation. Let us move, thank you. Now, for all of us who have, have, have worked with teachers before, you discover that all of us have had that one teacher that made us believe. And so I want to speak to just five components of what it would take for a teacher to be motivated. Number one, and indeed number one, is that teachers deserve better salaries or enrollments. So in on a practical sense, on an average, a teacher ends roughly a teacher with a degree. Can we go to the first one, I'm on number one? The teacher ends roughly about uh, 4,000 US dollars. And if you check uh, the, the food baskets of our countries in Africa, you discover that a family that has got five members of which a teacher is the head of a house, for them to live on a monthly basis, they need to spend way more than the $4,000. And so because of this, you discover that the teachers are merely surviving instead of thriving their minds are worried about how they will live how they will make ends meet instead of having time to think about how they will deliver and make a, a better learning experience for their learners every day so it's very important that this aspect of a teacher is taken care of and so that teachers may thrive and not just survive we can move to the next one thank you Number two is recognition of those that are hardworking. In recognizing teachers, we should not wait for a, a, a labor day or a prize giving day once in a year. School managers can come up with programs where they identify and recognize teachers that are performing well in a school, be it in a monthly basis or even on a terminal basis. What this does is it inspires those that are working hard to maintain the standard of hard work. It also inspires those that might be young teachers to look forward to the time that they too will, 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 will be awarded. So it brings up a, 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 a community or a school which has got high performance because their hard work is appreciated. So may schools, um, school leaders, ministers, PSs, and those that are in the ministries of education encourage recognition of hardworking teachers, not just when it's teacher's day, but every month, every term, award those that have been performing. Thank you. We can go to number three. Sponsorship and recommendations. This one is important because teachers need to develop professionally. So we want to ask that may teachers be sponsored for short courses. They could learn how to use a computer. They could learn how to do statistics. The statistics, they could learn of new modern teaching or pedagogical methods that are being implemented in the world over and, and, and promote the acquisition of 21st century skills. So we want uh, teachers to be recognized and also to be recommended for trainings, they could be fellowships, uh, something that will make sure that the teacher is highly motivated. We can go to the second last one. We can go to number four. So now in Zambia, we have a, a, a very popular song that I think even other teachers in other countries should have something that resonates to this. And, and I quote, this song says, 
Ponce Avani Banguele, which simply speaks or means that, you know, where, without a teacher, none of us would be where we are and who we are. And so it is important when teachers perform as we've spoken to, that those that are competent, those that have got the right experience and the right qualifications should receive the necessary promotions as ministries in our different schooling boards or in our different uh, schools. This maintains uh, a motivated environment because teachers, as they grow, they've got different needs. And one of the, uh, of the needs of a person is growth. So we recommend that those that are due for promotion, let them be promoted. Let me also speak to the fact that there are some teachers who could have started with a lower qualification as a maybe primary school teacher in the entry system. Then through time, they have upgrade, upgraded their papers. And you discover that it takes too long for them to be upgraded in their salary scales. So we ask that may teachers also receive that promotion with regards to their upgrading of their papers, because that is important and it motivates these teachers who have worked so hard to rise in the, to, to, to improve their education. They could have gotten a degree, a master's. May we make sure that the education systems are upgrading our teachers as and when they are due. Thank you, we can go to the last one. Teaching resources. This is important because in as much as we teachers can work with whatever we have in our environment. There are certain things that we need to ensure that we give a good and excellent lesson. And this is teaching resources. Teachers of science will tell you, we need apparatus in the labs. So give the teacher the resources that they need for them to enjoy their work because work needs to be satisfactory so we want apparatus we need books we want things that will make our work easy and also make sure that we deliver the knowledge the skills the values to all the learners in our care and 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 teacher motivation we can move to the next one if all these are attended to i tell you that we will have teachers who are motivated because a motivated teacher has a sound mental health. If their payment or their salary is good, the mental health is good and the teacher will have a positive impact on the learners that they are teaching in that school. If the teacher has the resources, if the teacher has been recognized, if the teacher has, 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 has been promoted, you will have a teacher whose mind is only focusing on the learners and not worrying about resources, money, because their mental health is good. And motivated teachers, believe me, you cope with any stress, any industry, any work environment has got stress, you know, but motivated teachers will cope with stress and they will look forward to the following day to come and do what they love to do best. We can go and close up. Thank you. Second last slide. Thank you. A motivated teacher colleagues, one will focus on giving the best learning and teaching experience to all their learners. And if you remember a teacher who taught you in high school, if they were motivated, they were bringing magic. You are looking forward to meeting them. So motivate our teachers and you will see great magic in the classroom. You will see great magic in the, in, in the community. And above all, I say to you, a motivated teacher will produce the best citizens for our continent, Africa, and for the globe. A happy, the next slide I know says, a happy teacher brings a happy learner. And a happy teacher can only come when the teacher is motivated. I thank you. May all the teachers be motivated. Good day. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Andrew, for that uh, uh, for that presentation. I could hear, or we could clearly hear your passion and uh, commitment as you presented. It was very clear that uh, these are issues that really means a lot to teachers and uh, to yourself as well. 
and uh, important that you said you cannot have teachers just going to teach without resources. It's just like uh, maybe sending people to the shamba. I don't know whether you call shambas or gardens in, in, um, in Zambia. Without any tools, or you want a carpenter to produce a, a table for you, and they, you are not giving them tools. So teachers need tools. And also that at, um, a motivated teacher has a sound mental health. That's very important. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew, for that. Uh, we go to the next pa uh, panelist, and that is um, Darin Mohonja. I think she's here, and uh, she's going to look at the practical techniques for teachers' retention and motivation. And uh, she's a senior well well wellness officer, Teacher Service Commission, Kenya. Over to you, Darin. Are you there? I saw you online. Danny, can you hear us? Okay. Okay. If you, uh, as you prepare, maybe we could have, I can see Mamadou Daka uh, yeah, okay. has come online. I can also see Dennis has come online, but uh, uh, for now, I would like to give opportunity to Mamadou Daka to give a presentation because I can see you already on the screen. And uh, Mamadou, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, if you can hear me, I, we are going to talk about revitalizing the status of teachers, their voices, their values in the society. Mamadou is a communication officer from the Gambia Teacher Union. So over to you, Mamadou, and uh, you have five minutes to give us that presentation. Thank you so much, Mamadou. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh... I am I am Mamadou Bakadam, the communication assistant of the Gamma Teachers Union. Basically, my uh, presentation, if projected, would be uh, on the revitalization of the values of teachers and the status of teachers, their voices, and their value in in society, which is uh, very important as we as we move forward. Uh, one of the most important things uh, we would we would look at when it comes to revitalizing the status of teachers and as teacher unions, uh, we can move to the first the, the other slide that talks about uh, motivation because it's time consuming. Now the first, the first one, please. Yeah, like like I was saying, it's 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 very important as as teacher unions or stakeholders in education to understand how much uh, the the value of revitalizing the voice of teacher is. So one of one of the aspects that we would we would basically look at is the issue of uh, uh, motivation. Move to the the second one. The second slide. Yeah, that, that, that is the issue of advocating for fair for fair comp compensation. In in uh, teaching is a very noble profession. We would we would always say, but uh, most of the times we have seen teachers leaving the profession because uh, of low low pay, and uh, this is. Uh, making it so much difficult for us to retain uh, our bright teachers in the in, in the profession because of uh, the low pay they have. So moving forward, it's very important that unions and stakeholders advocate for fair compensation, uh, fair compensation of teachers. But sometimes also that issue becomes very difficult, where you have uh, a salary pay scale where teachers and civil servants are usually on the same uh, pay structure that makes it very much difficult to also advocate for 
teachers' pay rise. But that essentially would also uh, bring in the need to advocate for the creation of teacher service commissions in countries that do not do not have that. Where you have a teaching service commission that can basically advocate for fair and equal compensation of teachers, that will be uh, very important. But because also of the low pay that teachers receive, you will find out that communities do not value teachers teachers that much. In fact, some of the children that we, we teach in our schools would, if you would ask questions of uh, what would you want to be in the future, they will tell you, uh, they will give you other professions, not that of the teacher, because they believe that the teacher does not earn much. So they are not motivated to, in fact, be, be teachers. And like I said earlier, uh, because of the low pay we have in the profession, we have a uh, brain brain. People are leaving the profession for other social social economies uh, that pay higher than that of the that of the teachers. So moving forward, it's always it's important that we advocate for fair uh, compensation of of teachers in order for us to be able to retain uh, the bright uh, the, the very best of uh, teachers in the profession. Next slide. Another important aspect uh, that we will be looking at too is the issue of professional development. Uh, yes, we would we would say our teachers go to colleges and universities and then they graduate with their certificates or diplomas or degrees. But one important aspect too is the need for professional development because uh, most instances uh, when the teachers are leaving the colleges and the universities, uh, they live with uh, uh, their degrees. But we would understand that the education sector uh, there are emerging issues in the education sector that they might not have learned in while they were in the colleges or universities. So continuous professional development is very important in revitalizing the status of the status of teachers. Provide them the opportunity to be trained to to harness their skills so that they can effectively and efficiently deliver in class. But sadly, too, we would see in countries when issues of professional development comes, you would have people within the education sector having the opportunity to be trained. But teachers in the classroom are not given that opportunity opportunity to be trained. There are no professional development schemes in, in, in some countries. So moving on to, it's very important because uh, especially in this age and time where we're talking about technology, it's very important for teachers to have skills in, in, in technology. But sometimes in, this, in the colleges and universities, they are not exposed to this. So it's professional development that would, continuous professional development that would enhance the teaching uh, skills of teachers, especially with regards to, with regards to technology and other emerging issues in the education sector. Uh, yes, to the next slide. Recognition of the expertise and extracurricular contributions of teachers. This is also something that is that is very important. Uh, we have teachers that mold the doctors or other people that we that we celebrate in society. But hardly do we see uh, countries or governments recognizing uh, teachers for the contributions they have done in, the, in in nation building. So moving on, it's also very important that we motivate and recognize uh, the contributions of teachers. Because the teachers are the people that make the presidents, they are the people that make the doctors that we celebrate every day. Uh, so importantly, governments and unions should move on to ensure that there are uh, schemes that are created to recognize the expertise of teachers. It is, it, is, it is just good enough to say to a teacher, thank you for what you have done. But, Hardly do we do we see uh, recognition ceremonies that are done for that are done for teachers. So importantly, there is a need for that in revitalizing the status of teachers to also celebrate what teachers uh, uh, what teachers do. This is very important. It, uh, we, it might not be monetary wise, but even a certificate to tell the teacher that we recognize your work in the community, in the schools, and in developing our children that would motivate that individual to do more. But where teachers are spending their resources and developing our children, making them uh, uh, to be good citizens, to be productive individuals in societies, but they are not being recognized. That is, that is sad. So uh, moving on, like I said, it's important that we recognize uh, the expertise and extracurricular contributions of teachers. Mamadou? Yes. Uh, can we uh, are you able to wrap it up in the next two minutes, please? Yeah. 
So uh, one one other aspect that I would that I would uh, talk about is the well-being of teachers, which is very important. Uh, provision of resources to address. Uh, um, the well-being, especially the mental and physical well-being of teachers is very important because uh, this would ensure that teachers feel motivated to stay in the classroom and teach effectively and efficiently. Uh, this uh, well-being issues are coming up. We have uh, uh, teachers that have uh, mental health issues. We have teachers that have been affected, have whose health are physically been affected, but they are not in the position to, to address those issues. So moving on, the creation of guidance and counseling, uh, uh, guidance and counseling services in schools is very important. Uh, my, it's not only for the teacher uh, to be a guidance and counselor in the school, but at some instances, the teacher needs uh, that guidance and counselling. So it is important that we create such in, in, in our schools and in our education sectors. But also it's important that we provide our teachers with health, health insurance. Uh, there are instances where teachers would have serious health problems, but they are not able to cater for, uh, to address their health, concern, health concerns. Provisions of health, uh, health insurance would ensure that uh, the, teachers, the teachers do well in what they are uh, in what they are doing, but also provision of a decent housing for, for teachers is very important. And like, to, just to wrap up, respect for teacher voices in the development of policies and curriculums, uh, the teacher voice needs to be needs to be heard because the teachers are the implementers of the curriculum and uh, other policies. So if they are implementers, their voice in the in the development of those policies and in the development of the curriculums is is, is very important. Uh, moving moving on, so uh, and and finally because uh, we're running out of time. Safe and inclusive learning environment too is it's important for both the teacher and uh, and the and the student. They will also uh, talk about the issue of class sizes. It's it's very important because uh, in in some countries and especially in the Gambia where you have a teacher that would have about sixty to seventy students in a classroom that is unhealthy. Uh, so be able to to move it on. We need to look at how do we address the issue of class sizes and the provision of adequate resources for, for, the, for, for the teacher? And also talking about the issues of bullying and violence in, in, in schools uh, and in communities that also affect, affect teachers, which is, which is very important. Today we are saying we are celebrating International, International Peace Day, but without peace, the teacher would not be able to be in the classroom to provide uh, the necessary support and development of, uh, of, of, of the children that are under their care. So it's always important to, to look at that aspect of uh, uh, aspect of the teacher. Mamadou, are you done? I am not, I am afraid, but this is also important. Uh, creation of public awareness campaigns especially in, in, in communities. We need to raise the voice of, we need to raise the, raise the voice of teachers within the community. Some communities do not, do not value uh, our teachers, but it's, it's important that maybe they are not aware how valuable teachers are in, in, in our communities. So awareness campaigns to raise uh, uh, in, in, in communities to provide that sense of highlights of what the teachers are doing is very uh, is very important this can involve success stories of teachers that have been in the education sector they have been doing very well uh, sending that or selling that to the communities is very important in order to create uh, that much of awareness in the communities uh, that uh, our teachers are okay yes. <coughs> thank, thank you, thank you, Mamadou, for your presentation and for giving us a, a point of view on how to motivate teachers from the teacher union perspective. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I was out of line for a while. Sorry about that. Um, your observation about teachers being grouped together with the civil servants, uh, I think that's a very valid point that should be treated as professionals. 
and separate from civil servant. And that way they can be handled as professionals and they can be respected. Um, at this point, I would like to invite our final uh, panelist. And then thereafter, we'll be inviting um, Dennis um, for, our, <coughs> for our final presentation. So we have, um, we have a Darin Mohonja. We, I don't know whether you're able to unmute yourself this time. Yes, yes, I can. Yes, I have. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. We can hear you. So Thank you. Uh, you, are, you are going to give us a presentation on practical uh, techniques for teacher retention and motivation. Uh, from, uh, and you are, from, uh, you are a senior awareness officer from the Teacher Service Commission Kenya. <coughs> I think we'll give you uh, five minutes to give to do that because of time. We're running short of time, but of course, we value your presentation. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also for sharing the screen. Thank you so much. My name is Darlene. Uh, thank you for the organizers also for having us on board. And uh, my presentation quickly, I'm just going to share our practical techniques for teacher retention, motivation. And in this context is the Teacher Service Commission the Kenyan context. And uh, just for a quick recap in a second, I'd love what Andrew, the, pre the previous presenters have done. And uh, one of the key things as a commission, uh, at the commission that we are valuing the teacher is so important. And that is why as I start off, it's good to know that from the facts that we have about our Kenyan situation, even as we share this, we remind ourselves that we are uh, Kenya scored fifth in the Africa Intellectual Property Organization yeah, Index, just behind Marisha, South Africa, and Botswana. So courtesy of these updates, we are looking at ourselves not badly off. We are somewhere as far as our teachers are concerned, and uh, we are the best the employers in the sub-Saharan Africa. And, and having said that, remember, look, as you, we, I'm sharing the screen, I hope you are having a look at our vision is to have a motivated teacher, a teacher who is ethically and globally competitive, you know, and can, is able to perform his or her task anywhere else. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, uh, so uh, however, having said that, as we brush through this presentation, one of the key things I've been hearing and, 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 and looking uh, from who, uh, where we are in the context as uh, the, the, we interact with the teachers. Remuneration still is a contentious issue. As we talk about motivation today, as we talk about retaining teachers who we are, whether they're in the public service or in the private sector, remuneration is still a key to us. And I was having a recap as we talk this, at the back of our mind, you know, there is a guy who was called Abraham Maslow. And Maslow, they, there is a model that he, he puts in context as, as we share this. And it's a model that takes us to understand about something about motivation and even of human behavior. And it maps around, you know, motivating an individual from the aspect of the basic needs. Eh? And that is the physiological needs, safety, love, belonging, steam, up to the self-actualization. And just in a brief, this model talks to us about having enough that you need from the basic needs. And when you have enough, when, what will you, uh, prompt you to go to the next stage in life? So even as much as we are talking about remuneration, let's put in the context that we'll never have enough. We cannot have enough because as much as you have all the everything that you need, the, all the money that you have, there is always that belonging. And Maslow is telling us um, and, and, and putting us in that context about what motivates a human being. Next slide, please. So in the, the education system in Africa, Kenya in, in particular, we still are facing a major challenge in retention, in retention of teachers and even motivating our teachers. And uh, at this presentation, we just want to have a look at strategies that uh, the Teacher Service Commission in Kenya has put in place to be able to, to look at this aspect of retaining our teachers and motivating our teachers. And, and one of the key aspects that we are looking at, number one, is we are not, not badly off. Number one, we have a competitive remuneration. And, and we look at ourselves and having coming number, uh, number three, comparatively, we have a good salary in the region, in the context you know, of Africa. 
We are looking at our improved job conditions, clear career progression and guidelines to ensure that we have an, an aspect of equity and gender balance. And, and giving every teacher, whether uh, despite, despite you know, the gender issue, equal opportunities for them to excel and, and you know, progress. And that is why it's categorically, they, this has to be put in context. And as far as gender is concerned, you know, so that we are able to know where are we placing this teacher? Where are they going to? You know, where are we posting them? And, and, and having a look at our, uh, uh, the policies that are guiding us, they are very sti uh, stipulated clearly so that we are able to know that, you know, the clear career progression is put into context to be ensure the equity, you know, and gender balance. Number four, we have a very flexible and structured teacher profession, professional development course that is tapered to carbon competency. And, and, and this is delivered synchronously or asynchronously. And, and I know most of the teachers have put into this into context where the same modes that are costed, where the teacher doesn't pay anything. And we have these that, you know, the commission has already paid and the teachers follow through. So the flexible model is very important because a teacher that, you know, is able to deliver is a teacher that who is, who is supported professionally to be able to grow you know, and to be able to know that I have ascended from this level to this level supported by the employer. So the, the TPAD course is there to support the teachers and it's very flexible, structured. There are those that are able to enroll, you know, in, the, in their time things and, and, and they are able to follow through to be able to know that now I am a teacher who is qualified and I can, I can teach in this manner, I can apply for this promotion, I can be able to serve in this manner because I know I have been supported and I am at this level. Next slide, please. Yeah, we look also at an aspect that uh, at our policies that are operating and the recognition and rewarding system. And most of uh, them, we've tried to capture the teacher as much as possible. One of the key awards that you know and recognition that we have to reward the teacher who is under TSC is the Teacher of the Year Award. And, and these are awards that we are displayed, especially when we mark our World Teachers Day on 5th of October. They, they, we have to uh, exemplary recognize the Teacher of the Year Award, that is Toya. We recognize the Principal of the Year Award, that is Poya. And we also have an, a special award that is given to a teacher who has exemplary uh, and, and exhibited a, an innovation you know, skill and aspect and be rewarded with the special award of the CEO. That is called the special the CEO award. And there is also the, 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 the uh, award during the science fairs. That is the STEM, especially when these teachers are, you know, have exhibited their interaction during the activities for science teachers. These teachers are also rewarded in that aspect. So we have a number of, uh, just to name a few, the recognition and awards that we be able to make this teacher feel that we recognize the value they are doing, the innovation and the time they put into that context to be able to know that we value their work and they are important as far as the education system is concerned. Next, please. We also have a program at the commission uh, that is very uh, important to us and, and now it's bearing a lot of fruits. We call it TMEC. TMEC is teacher induction mentorship and coaching. And we are looking at four aspects when we have this program in place. One of them is the teacher's professional conduct. Are these teachers exhibiting the professionalism when they are in that school environment? Are they able to perform their duties maximally being supported wherever they are in whichever role that they're supposed to play? And is this teacher motivated? You know, Are we looking at their capacity development? So this program was initiated and is running all specifically number one for new teachers who have come on board. They are taken through the program to be able to be inducted and be and, and be told, you know, be taken through the profession to be able to be supported and to project where they are so that when they come in, they have a wide mind. How am I going to play my role as a teacher? What can I maximize? What is my future as far as a teacher is concerned? This is also a program that is targeting newly promoted, you know, teachers, especially those who have been assigned new assignments you know sometimes you know you have been uh, incorporated in a new role you need to be mentored and to be able to uh, you know to be shown the capacity how are you uh, supposed to you know to discharge your duties 
is also a program that is targeting that. And we also have this program, you know, it's targeting teachers, especially we, we know we have employees sometimes who are, you know, exhibit the errant, you know, issues. So these are teachers also who are uh, captured in this program to be able to you know, to be supported back. Maybe they have issues of health challenges and they are to be supported. Maybe after discipline, you know, they are now incorporated in the program to be able to, you know, to be taken through because now, and this, this is a land that, you know, you've walked through and, you know, we are at this bed now. How do you walk through? So TMEC is a program that is also running you know, under the, uh, uh, the, the specified directorate so that they are able to support all these teachers, whether they are new recruit, you know, new assignments, and also recovering from the health issues or discipline issues. Next, please. We also have an aspect of communities of practice. And uh, we, having said this, we teachers of a, a certain subject, you know, they register and they support one another. This is an interaction as a community, especially now teachers who have uh, in, in, in one aspect. We look at collaborations, even from, you know, from the research institutions. Now, one of the institutions that we, we work with closely is, is the Center for Mathematics, Science and Technology Education in Africa. This is Semester, especially for teachers who are, you know, are, are collaborated in science, you know, aspect. We also have, you know, the teachers who are, you know, in the bracket of the special needs that are collaborated in the KISE, Kenya Institute of Special Needs for, you know, for the special needs teachers. How are they supported? Especially teachers who are teaching maybe in the, in the, in the, in the, in the schools that, you know, are not, you know, a, a, in special needs per se, or maybe a teacher who has special needs in a certain environment. So these are, you know, programs that, you know, that a, an, a, an aspect that we are also looking into. We look at KEMI, especially for, for management uh, management administrators to be able to you know to be supported, to be able to know to, to for them to articulate the supervisory course, the roles and be the administrator, the administration that we would want them to be. We look at KIB, you know, especially for teachers who have uh, issues with, with, with visual needs, Kenya Institute for Blind. And, and the major aspect is usually the transcription, you know, transcribing from the curriculum to Braille so that these teachers are supported. They're able to discharge their duties while supported by the employer. So these are just a number, just to mention a few, in the communities of practice so that the teachers blend in a certain category or cohort. They are able to support each other. And you know, from that yeah. angle, they are that able was. to feel motivated and be able to know that, you know, this is the angle led. I am a special needs teacher. You know, I have this allowance. Next, please. Okay. Uh, uh, Darlene, we, yeah. we, we yes, please. We'll wrap up with the next one minute because thank we you, still thank have you. a number okay. of presenters. Okay, yeah. okay. The next slide, pro, uh, provision of study leave, especially for those who are going, you know, is uh, in their line with their career lane, they are given pay. Those who are not without, you know, in the career lane are uh, proceed to leave without pay, but when they come back, we collaborate them in the, on the payroll. Next, please. We also have, this is one of the key programs that we are running, wellness support program, especially for teachers who have mental health issues. We have a mental uh, wellness uh, unit that is running these other programs, teachers who are recovering, they have NCD, lifestyle issues, uh, you know, and, uh, any other issue. It's a wellness support program that is run from the wellness center. That is, we, are, we still are following through to be able to know that the teacher on the ground is supported in terms of the wellness aspect. And here we have counselors, we 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 are we are looking at having you know the the mental health even even a support you know teacher on the ground to be able to be supported in terms of their wellness next please improved uh, medical scheme. Our teachers have a medical scheme that is supporting them fully, especially the teacher uh, family and over you know overboard and this it has a wide coverage on mental health. This teacher can still, even if the teacher who is sick will still be supporting if they are to get treatment outside the country, of course, with limitation. But the medical scheme is supporting our teacher fully, fully until they are able to come back to work. Next, please. We all have teachers who have special allowance. That is the hardship allowance, especially teachers who are serving in, in the asshole areas. We have teachers who have special needs, especially maybe those who are visually issues. 
they have the guide allowance. So there are special allowance for teachers in specific categories where they are working and as is stipulated you know, in the, in the nature of what they do. Next, please. That's maybe in second last slide. And we have our, our services that we've tried to, you know, to, to benchmark and, and, and uh, not necessarily benchmark, but to be able to establish and access the teacher, especially the teacher on the ground. If these teachers are serving from a certain region, do they have to come all the way to the headquarters and be able to assist them? So the commission has invested in online services right away you know to be able from the ground how can this teacher there's a stipulated you know uh, uh, mechanism where they are able to come and communicate whether it's the county director up to the regional director up to the headquarter and 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 the management has done so well many of them have gone around and we have open forums and direct engagements even with the teachers on the ground so there is the appropriate communication channels at all levels most of their services now they can just log on the you know on the on the on the on the, on the website and be able to assist you don't need to travel all along from the western region or the eastern region unless if there is need be many Many of them are now investing and getting hold. Whether you want your pay slip, whether you want this or that, it's the online. And this is the way to go as much as far as ICT is concerned, because we really want technology even onto the ground. Last slide, please. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Darlene. Uh, yes, uh, it is nice to hear from the employer point of view how to revitalize the status of teachers and their voices. And uh, of course, uh, from your presentation, it is very clear that uh, your claim is not without evidence that you are the best employers in sub saharan Africa. Thank you so much, Danny, for that. And now we go to last but not least, um, Dennis, uh, our colleague Dennis from uh, Education International. I, are you there, Dennis? No? Yes, yes, thank you, Dr. Hungi. My apologies, okay. the public quality. Okay. That's OK, Hungi. Dennis. Let, yes. let us make us more deal, eh? <laughs> we, we, we agree that uh, you make it uh, as brief as possible so that we have enough, uh, sufficient time for people to, uh, to ask questions. Uh, yeah, sure. Because we are, we, are, we are finishing on the hour. Thank you so much, Dennis. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I hope you can hear me. My apologies once again. It's a public holiday today in Ghana. Yes, so I'm joining from home. Right. Um, I would like, first of all, to thank all the speakers and panelists who have really shared very useful reflections on how we can improve teacher motivation in Africa. We have listened to even concrete examples from our representatives at country level. So I would like to briefly summarize, but the starting point really is uh, what we call the global survey on the status of teachers conducted by Education International this year. The survey is being finalized, therefore it's not yet final, but uh, I would like to draw from some of the reflections in that survey. Uh, first of all, Africa has the greatest shortage of teachers. We know that, but the survey has reconfirmed that. But the most important thing is why we're not having enough qualified teachers in Africa, why people are not joining teaching. This is a fundamental question when talking about teacher motivation. They have identified, the researchers have identified um, a number of factors that keep people from joining teaching in Africa or in the world. And then first it is low salaries, low salaries. And then number two, it is low professional status of the profession itself. And then number three, it is excessive working time, excessive working time or high workload. And then number four, it is poor career progression. And then the next is poor management practices in our schools. And then the next is low levels of trust in the teaching profession. The next is poor occupational health and safety. The next is poor employment protection. And the last of the major factors is that related to the level of qualification. So lack of proper training and qualification. 
Now, if these factors, dear colleagues, are keeping people away from joining our profession, they have a bearing on teacher motivation. I've heard people talk about salaries and working conditions. Yes, that's what our global survey on the status of teachers shows, that unless we address the issue of salaries, the issue of working conditions, we are not going to motivate our teachers. We've heard about the case of Kenya. Kenya was saying, yes, we have, we're paying very well, but probably if you ask the teachers themselves, they would feel differently. Um, so it is relative, but of course, looking at Sub-Saharan Africa, there are countries that Kenya has been sided with South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, and others that pay relatively better than other countries. But in the majority of our countries, teacher salaries are very low. I did a survey on teacher on teacher salaries some, some years back, looking at six African countries, I was shocked to see that in the majority of these countries, teachers were earning the equivalent of 100 US dollars per month, sometimes even lower than that. Surely that is not enough to take care of the basic needs of the teacher, whether you're talking about food, whether they're talking about medical expenses or sending children to school. So we need to address the issue of salaries. We need to address the issue of housing, for example. We need to address the issue of um, social security, of pension benefits, et cetera, et cetera. This is critical. And then number two, we need to address the issue of teacher well-being. Teacher well-being, meaning addressing work-life balance, the issue of the workload, addressing issues of safety, issues of health, providing psychosocial support. This is critical. Number three, we need to ensure that teachers are involved in social and policy dialogue. That can motivate them. Don't impose decisions on them. Involve them in coming up with decisions that affect the curriculum, teaching and learning every day. Education policy, decisions related to their salaries and working conditions. That's critical. Number four, we need to ensure that te our teachers are well-trained, they receive continuous professional development and support. And that should also include trust. This is critical. Without training, without peer-to-peer -peer support, peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, creating those opportunities, our teachers will not be motivated. Unfortunately, there are countries which sometimes just ask teachers to say, on your own, go and uh, do teacher professional development. Actually, according to the 1966 ILO UNESCO recommendation concerning the status of teachers, we should be as governments supporting our teachers, providing free continuous professional development. That is critical. And again, sometimes we make mistakes and say, you cannot do professional development during uh, the week or during school time, it should be holidays, weekends who are making it appear as if it's punishment. I'm looking at the example of Belgium. In Belgium, actually, there are days when children don't go to school because teachers are doing professional development. That's part of the system. So we need to support our teachers. And then number five, we need to address issues around school leadership, teacher leadership, democratize our schools. Sometimes the problem is how our schools are run. Teachers have no room for playing a role, for creativity, for motivation. There is no support system, whether you're talking about pedagogical support. And we're not blaming head teachers. Quite often, they are not even trained themselves on how to run schools. So that's why it's important to provide training for our school leaders, but also to allow our teachers to exercise leadership leadership within the classroom, leadership within the school, leading teams, peer-to-peer -peer learning, collaboration, all these things can motivate our teachers. I want to end by saying we have a great opportunity to elevate teacher motivation on World Teachers Day, which is just about a week away and some days away. So let's use that great opportunity to celebrate our teachers, to value them, to lift their morale, remembering that the crux of the matter is to improve their salaries and working conditions. All the other things uh, should also come in to support that. 
And finally, don't forget teachers working conditions are children's learning conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Denise. Uh, teacher learning conditions are student learning conditions, <laughs> um, working conditions or learning conditions. That's a good um, uh, way to finish uh, your presentation. And thank you so much for getting time to come. Is it, you came from the beach, yeah? <laughs> or, or there's no, an Akala from a holiday. It's Sorry for Akra. drawing you yeah. <laughs> from your, from your time out. So anyway, thank you so much participants. You have come to the end of the panel presentation. We have a section now where we'll go to, to looking at what is appearing in the chat. And for that, uh, our, my colleague, uh, Mary Ann, who is the lead consultant at Kicks Africa 19, will take us uh, over that. And after that, we'll be taking some few questions and then we shall have a wrap up. We hope to finish on the hour. Thank you so much, Marianne. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hungi. And um, thank you everyone for uh, excellent presentations. Uh, very passionate. Um, I've been impressed by the chat room. There have been so many wonderful observations and uh, as a former teacher myself, I really uh, sympathize with um, the comments that are from teachers and that uh, speak about some of the, the real challenges that teachers are facing. So I want to begin with some of those questions. Um, so um, can we begin with a question by Teddy, uh, Teddy Nabere? He's asked quite a few questions and many of them are on point. Um, let me try to group them together a bit. There was a question that he asked uh, during Miss Given Daka's presentation. Uh, he asked, what specific plans are there to um, uh, support teachers psychologically and also to bring more women on board as teachers? So he's asking about specific and deliberate concrete strategies. Uh, and if I could also address his question, it's sort of related to Ms. Jane Chapaka, he asked, uh, the teacher from Malawi, he asked Jane uh, that much of what she's saying is, um, is, is excellent, but it's, it's aspirational, it's a should. This should happen, this should be the case. So um, could we ask maybe all of the presenters to weigh in on Teddy's question that what exactly uh, practically can we do instead of the should, the aspirations, what, what is happening uh, that can better motivate teachers, um, support them psychologically, bring more women into the profession and uh, motivate them when in fact the leaders are not motivated. So I think I want to begin with Teddy's question, less aspirational should be and practically what is happening? What are the practical strategies that are happening? So maybe we'll give that to uh, Ms. Givendaka and anyone else who'd like to weigh in on practical, concrete, actual strategies. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, I, I think one of the, one of the psychological uh, questions, psychological dimension, I think that, that um, um, indicated and this is resonated across all the, the, the presentation, is that teachers normally work under very really difficult, uh, in very difficult um, uh, situations. So one, one of the things that needs to, uh, to be done to support their psychological well-being is one, to ensure that uh, teachers are working in environments that are not stress prone. And, and number two, providing psychological support, psychological services to teachers. Because right now, of course, in, in many schools, there are, um, there are uh, counselors, maybe people look more uh, towards supporting. Uh, sorry, it's a little hard to hear the speaker. Um, Miss Given, sorry, we're having a hard time hearing you. We're getting oh, some really? comments in the chat box too. Yeah, it seems like it's a double microphone. We're getting your echo. Um, I don't know. I don't have um, double, but, but let, let me just maybe put that on my board. board. Is, that, is, that, is that better? Hello? Uh, it, it's not very clear. Uh, sorry, Ms. Given. We're not able to hear you clearly. Okay, okay I'll, I'll type, type in my response. response. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Hello? Hello? Yes, I hear you, but your voice is coming double, like an echo. Maybe we ask all the 
participants to mute, except the one who is speaking to see if it can be better. Is that okay? Hello, hello. Is that, is that better now? Uh, I think it is not working from your end. It is uh, coming out with an echo. So, uh, Marianne, you could, uh, as we try to fix her issue, maybe you could give a chance to somebody else. Uh, yes, that's fine. Uh, thank you. Um, could I ask a question uh, to Miss Darlene, uh, the, I think the, one of the last speakers. There was a comment uh, from Olive uh, Mubutia from Kenya in the chat box. She's asking that um, when we look at the awards uh, in Kenya uh, given to teachers, sometimes you see that the awards are given to schools that already have excellent resources or at least good resources that are well-equipped. So schools that are already uh, doing well in some regard. But um, what about schools, what about the efforts of, of teachers in schools that are not well supported, that are poorly endowed? Uh, could we have a conversation about that? How to better recognize teachers, maybe in rural areas, marginalized areas, teachers that are maybe struggling silently uh, against uh, the odds and that maybe won't get the recognition unless we intentionally try to look for them. Could we hear from maybe Darlene on that and maybe some other speakers too on uh, uh, the teachers in, in less well-equipped schools? Uh, oh, okay. I hope the question was clear. Should I repeat? The question was clear. Uh, I don't know, maybe... Did you get the question, um, Darlene? It's for Darlene, from TSC. Yes, Sally, please come up again kindly. I think I have an echo on my side. Oh, you have an echo? Yes, please come up again. Was, uh, Marianne was, uh, somebody asked a question in regards to the awards that Kenya is uh, giving to teachers, the best teachers, uh, best um, uh, principal, uh, best uh, maybe curriculum and so on, uh, extracurriculum activities and so on, uh, CEO. And saying that uh, most of these awards end up with the schools that are already performing well in Kenya in terms of uh, resources, and they are already well equipped. Uh, what initiatives do we have in Kenya, or do you have in Kenya, to also more, uh, award the teachers maybe in uh, schools that are not well resourced and who are working under harsher kind of uh, conditions? That is the question, I think. Marianne. Yeah, that That's is a valid, a, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get the point. It's a valid concern. It's a valid concern. And one of the key, the key uh, planners of the world during the World Teachers Day is to look as much as possible where these teachers are coming from, you know, the context or the exposure to where they are. So I wouldn't want to defend that maybe the teacher came from this certain, you know, environment or this certain zone, but it's as much as looking of what this teacher has done. Is it significant to the community, to the society? And that is why the T the Toya Award comes from. And the C one of the key things that the also the CEO Award looks at is the, the exposure or where these teachers at the environment where are these teachers teaching you know what are they exposed to what predicament have they you know evolved to come through and to be able to to know to uh, to to get that award uh, for example like the the our teacher who just you know got the teacher of the year award in africa the other day you know that was not a teacher who was coming from a special school or a national school was just a teacher from any other ordinary school and that is the the the, the emphasis that whatever this teacher does is it significant does it touch lives you know is not just within the school setup or just maybe within even the peers, the teachers, but it's how the impact 
of what this teacher has done, what this principal has done to be able to, you know, to get their word. So uh, I would I would look at it that you know from the previous past is it's it's very true that the what the teacher has done is so significant that they get the award. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Marianne. If you agree, we are running short of time. Uh, maybe we can answer the questions on. Um, maybe you can ask the. the um, the speakers to have a look at the chat and see whether they can reply some of the answer or some of the questions that relate to them, so that we also have a chance to give to uh, people to ask questions. Also, maybe who could not uh, maybe type on the chat, maybe for one reason or another. So uh, for this session, I'm going, handing over to Victoria. And Victoria, we are running short of time. Sorry, <laughs> maybe you can pick two or three questions. They are very, very, very hot. And then we, okay. sum, we summarize. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. I'll just go straight to the point. I only saw a hand up by Reinhardt, Reinhard, a name like that. And then I see the hand is down. So Reinhardt from South Africa, YMCA, are you able to still ask the question? Yes, please go ahead. You only have a minute to ask the question. Thank you. Over to you. Oh, there's also wireless. Okay, Reinhard, please unmute and speak. Thank you. Okay, while the person is not yet speaking, we can have wireless. I need speed on this one because we don't have time. Reinhard, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, colleagues. Yes, indeed, I'm um, uh, in um, Nelson Mandela Bay and really privileged to be among you. And, Thank you so much for all the presenters, and and we really covered all the the elements that also uh, get, gets me thinking about teaching myself. I was a teacher for twenty seven years in a high school, and so the conditions of teachers has always uh, been interesting to me. The our speakers covered many things such as in mentorship programs, induction, um, coaching, but some of the uh, to answer some of the challenges that, that we teachers face, even in rural communities, some of the approaches that we have, and even in our training and programs that we have uh, in schools at the, and, and at university is community schools. Um, these are, are schools that uh, uh, take uh, into consideration all the stakeholders uh, within a community to build education in those uh, challenging contexts as well. But really my question is also or, or one of the things that I've been thinking about and reading up is the, the wellness of teachers and how to overcome the many stresses that they experience. And one of the things that I propose is that teachers need to be, to really become more and more um, agents of change, not only in their schools for learning and teaching, but, but indeed in their communities. And I'm talking here about okay. teacher it's your agency as a okay. prospect to overcome the many challenges that teachers face. I know okay, I'm going to cut you short. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Reinhard. I've taken the point on the issue of wellness of teachers and the concern around community schools. Uh, thank you so much. And I'm sure the uh, presenters are listening. So I'm going to move quickly to Wallace. Then I'll, I say a feel bad and then Massey. Please use one minute each so that we can run through this quickly. Be precise, okay? Thank you. Wallace uh, first. Wallace first. And then Thank you very much. I hope I'm audible. Yes, 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 yes. No, uh, I think I, I have learned quite a lot. I have liked the Kenyan, the presentation from Malawi and the presentation from Zambia, as well as the presentation, the other presentations, all what was coming out the importance of teacher motivation is very high. I think as Africans, there is need for us to come together and be able to work out a system which will be regional, which helps each and every teacher within our region be able to come out and this indicate to say what is happening in Kenya is what is happening in Zambia. That is what is happening in all other countries. I think that was just a comment which I wanted to put across. 
Okay, thank you so much. Well, that's well noted. Thank you. Mercy, precise. Thank you. Under a minute. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, are you able to get me? Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, my question is, is it possible to identify teachers at college level? Because most of the times in our schools, because we, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm reacting to the presentation that says we have shortage of teachers and the motivation is low. So we have people go to teaching profession because they don't have any option. Because of that, Maybe they applied for engineering, they are left out. Dog, medicine left out, then they don't have option. They are not already motivated, they join teaching profession. So some teachers we also have in our schools, they did other professional not education, but because they can't find jobs, they go to teaching. Do we have okay. any way of creating that so that maybe we can have already motivated teachers who have passion, who chose teaching profession, <laughs> and then the motivation should come as an addition. Okay. Is it possible? Okay, Marcy. Point taken. Thank you very much yeah. for that. Quickly, yeah. Philemon, Philemon, mm -hmm. Philomen. I don't know. It's Philemon, Philomen. Unmute and speak under a minute, please. And I request participants that you just give us maybe just 10 extra minutes to address this. I know that now our time is up. Philemon, quickly. Mm -hmm. if... Okay, Philemon is not talking. I saw Philbert. There was Joan who can come on quickly. Yeah, thank you very much, doctor. And uh, I want to thank all the presenters. This is a clear manifestation that uh, as teachers, we know what is supposed to be done in order to deliver quality education. Now, my question is, mm -hmm. what strategy mm -hmm. is there for UNESCO to coordinate and have the voices of the teachers come out for the benefit of the innocent children who deserve better and who are not going to succeed as long as the teacher motivation is very low. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Philbert. Uh, point taken. Um, please presenters and panelists, the questions are also addressed to you. Uh, John Kajura, can you speak under a minute? Yes, thank you. Speak louder, increase the volume. John, I'm struggling to listen to hear you. The, the vibrations in your line. Yes, try again one more time. Can okay. Okay. It, Sorry, John, it's very hard to hear you. I'm going to cut you short. I can't hear anything, and I'm sure others can't hear you very well. Please type in the chat room if it's possible. OK, um, I think we've addressed the, 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 the questions that were online and uh, with the hands raised. I want to um, ask the, the panelists to just quickly talk through uh, some of these um, issues that are being are presented. So um, I don't know if our panelists are still here. We have Mamadou, we have uh, Lynette, we have uh, Andrew, we have Jen, and we have Darlene, and, and we have Dr. Uh, Signolo. And um, yes, quickly, we want you to give your views and perspectives in terms of what has been presented. One, it was the issue of wellness, boosting the wellness of teachers and uh, how teachers can become agent, uh, change agents. There was an aspect from uh, Wallace just appreciated the presentations 
And then we had Mercy who was asking, is it possible to identify at least teachers from the colleges since we already have some, we can identify them from there and, and then reduce on the issue of uh, retention and also address the issues of motivation. Then Philbert is asking about the strategy that can bring together um, the teacher's voices in a coordinated manner. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure Dr. Dennis will talk about that because uh, he's from EI. And then I missed Joanne's. Over to you, our presenters, who can go first. One minute so that we can wrap it up. Okay, Dr. Dennis, we can start with you if you are still online. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for the reflections. Just to say concerning the awards in Zimbabwe, for example, the awards are categorized. There's an award for schools in urban areas, rural areas, best school overall and so on, or teacher overall. That helps to recognize the different contexts within the country. So we would encourage that definitely. For example, you could even look at the most improved school or teacher, for example. And then uh, coming to the people who choose teaching as uh, probably a stepping stone to somewhere else or because they couldn't get their first choice. It's an overall challenge in Africa, by the way. And mm -hmm. by the way, also governments will use teaching as a way of creating employment overall as a political strategy. So it's not as straight as we would like it to be. But if we improve working conditions, and we have stringent selection measures, those who are training to teach, but also licensing measures um, for people to teach through teacher professional councils and so on, that can help to improve the situation. Teachers as change agents, yes, definitely, we need to build teacher agency. And the best way of doing that is to create opportunities for teachers to collaborate, to exercise leadership and so on. If you don't do that, you take away their confidence, you take away their ability to lead. And then finally, teacher voices. I thought Philbert's question was directed directly to UNESCO. Uh, it would be good for UNESCO IGBA to comment on this question as well. I believe Philbert wants to know what UNESCO IGBA is doing. But on our part as Education International, the collective voice of teachers, we encourage governments, African governments, to actually create opportunities for social and policy dialogue for involving teachers in decision mm. making at all levels. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Dennis, anyone who wants to add among the panelists, I'll give only one opportunity yeah. uh, because, um, yeah. Any panelist, Sorry, presenter? Yeah. Yes, please go oh. ahead. Go maybe ahead, just please. To, uh, now, second or so, maybe just to add on the mental health and, and the psychosocial aspect of teachers, because mm -hmm. now at where we are coming from and way, way forward, as much as we are looking at our teachers, a teacher who is very healthy is a sober teacher, is a teacher who is able to innovate and ascend. Whether in mm -hmm. terms of the exposure, the grounds where they are operating from, the environments where they are operating from, a teacher who is very healthy, is a teacher who is able to offer a quality education. So we look at the issue of mental health that is key to us, whether it's channeled from up or from down, whether it's from the school environment, we have to look at strategies how to support these teachers. So mental health is something that we cannot avoid. We cannot look aside and you not know, brush our eyes and leave maybe alone to the teacher to maneuver their ways, but we have to support it. So mental health is very key. And as I know, Andrew will support me on that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adeline. This discussion is getting, I don't know what, Juisa and Juisa, but we have to end, colleagues. So uh, I see the question that, um, that um, what was her name? That um, Joan wanted to present was about the issue of CPDs. Uh, she was asking about CPDs on motivation of teachers. Is it possible to have in place CPDs, seminars, or just the rest, you know, sponsored for the best teachers? Yeah, I think Kenya talked about the issue of CPDs, uh, which is very, very uh, good for others to learn from. And the uh, question towards UNESCO, yes, we have been supporting countries to develop social dialogue frameworks and then supporting them to have 
social dialogues and also we build the capacity of teacher unions on social dialogues to make sure that at least our unions are mentored in bringing the voice of the teachers to the fore. And we also support on the development of relevant evidence-based teacher policies that help uh, strengthen how to address the teaching profession or support the teaching profession in many countries. So we are doing quite a lot on UNESCO's side and especially ICBA, we are supporting countries. If you need support, feel free to let us know. And we, we do a lot of frameworks on teachers and training and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. And um, lastly, uh, colleagues, let me see, I've seen Fatu's hand. It has been there for a long time. I don't know if you can just limit it to a very short time, Fatu, and present your concern, and then we can move and wrap it up. I will hand over back to Hungi to wrap it up. Fatu? Fatu, are you still there? Can you speak? Okay. Hello. Yes, Hello, go good ahead. afternoon, colleagues. Yeah, okay, this is Fatu from the Gambia. Okay, I have uh, definitely listened to all presentation and in, it seems like all problems are the same across Africa. So my question goes to the presenter from the Gambia Teachers Union. Uh, what are uh, some of the things that the Gambia Teachers Union is trying to do to address, if not all, some of the uh, problems of teachers in the country? Okay, Mama do this just quickly. Mamadou, can you address the concern? The question is yours quickly in one minute and we hand over back to Hongi. Yeah, yeah thank, Mama... thank you very much, Fatou. I think the Ghana Teachers Union is, is, is doing uh, a, a lot. Uh, recently, we've been engaged in uh, advocacy to increase the pay of teachers. But like I emphasized, uh, where you have uh, teachers within a unified civil service pay structure, it's always difficult uh, to get teachers have their pay increase. So what we've been doing is to ensure that there is a revision of the Education Act to pronounce the creation of a teaching service commission that would independently look at the issues of uh, teachers. When it comes to professional development, the, the, the Ghana Teachers Union partners with the Canadian Teachers Federation to conduct some professional development trainings. This we have been doing from 2021. And recently, that is as recent as July, August, we conducted uh, another summer professional development training through the partners with the Canadian Teachers Federation for about uh, 60 young teachers in Region 4 and Region 2. We've been also been conducting guidance and counseling training for, for teachers. We graduated the first batch uh, in Region 4 and then the second batch in Region 2. But uh, we are intensifying advocacy uh, very well to ensure that some of these concerns are addressed. Okay, thank you, Mamadou. Uh, thank you for running through it very quickly. For mental health and psychosocial support for teachers, we are running a regional program on that one at ICBAS. So if you need support, you let us know. We have training, we have the guides, we have everything. Hungi, it's so hot to end. I'm handing over back to you. <laughs> thank, thank you, colleagues. Thank you. I can, thank see, you. I can see that uh, people are really motivated by this topic. And thank you so much, right. participants, for attending. And uh, having, uh, of course, we are teachers. Once a teacher, always a teacher. So uh, I know these issues, and uh, Victoria also knows this issue, and uh, Dennis and the rest of us. So I uh, would like to come, we we'll come to the end of our, uh, of our, of our can you mute yourself? I can, who is that? So anyway, this is the, back to what I was saying, we have heard from experts, uh, all the way from ICBA, UNESCO headquarters, Carlos was there, uh, from uh, Af from um, Education International, Dennis, uh, Afghan. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we also had from uh, perspectives of the teacher union from the Gambia, and also from the teacher employer, uh, the TSC Kenya, and from the teacher themselves, from Malawi and also Zambia. And I'd like to thank all our presenters for the wonderful work you have done and uh, getting time to come and present this to us. Uh, this is uh, inform uh, important information that we are also learning from you and uh, as we share information moving forward on how to motivate our teachers. So I would like to request maybe we can put on our cameras so that we have a final photo. I don't know who will take the photo. Uh, it's usually good to have a photo. I don't know you guys, do you like photos? so that we take photos and uh, we say goodbye to each other. As I thank Marianne. Marianne, are you able to take that photo? 
Marianne is good at that. Um, okay. I can do it. No problem. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sharing my screen with my colleague uh, Salio. Oh, how come you're not there? Oh, come on. Ah, yeah. ah, no, no, I'm there. Yeah. Take the photo. <laughs> We are twins. Okay, everyone. Okay. Uh, there's still some cameras okay. off. Keep okay. them I on until I finish, please. That's where it's there. Hi, Capra. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we can say goodbye to each other. And uh, thank you so much for thank this you. wonderful. Just, just, just a moment. Session. I haven't taken it yet. <laughs> no, one more. One more. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. And uh, goodbye. Thank All you. Right. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Dennis, for making it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, colleagues, friends. Wow. So, so amazing to see everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye.